Welcome to our service online on this All Saints Day. Hebrews 12 tells us, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. As we worship today, may we be encouraged and inspired to run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord of history, as we meet to worship you, we praise you for the way that you have spoken throughout history and continue to speak today as you reveal your will and purposes, as you offer your guidance and express your love. We thank you for the Holy Spirit poured out on the day of Pentecost on those first disciples and on all who are followers of Christ down through the ages. We pray for a fresh outpouring of your Spirit, reviving the church with life and power, enabling us and others to run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. May our faith be deepened and our lives transformed. Holy Spirit, move among us and minister to us as we worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. and remembering God's love, grace and mercy, let's confess our sins to him. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. 
through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the Collect for All Saints Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship. In the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from Revelation 7, and we hear about the great multitude worshipping God. The seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, beginning at the ninth verse. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and that we are able to gather both in person and online. And we pray, Lord, that this uh, All Saints Day, that you would remind us just what a privilege it is to be your child and what, a, what we are a part of as well, as we think of the gathered saints in Revelations. Still our hearts, Lord, focus our eyes and our minds on Jesus, and by the power of your Spirit, equip us to live for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. It is your first day of university, or maybe it's your first day at a new job. Maybe you've moved to a new town, and suddenly you find yourself looking for something. We're all looking for those places uh, to belong, a people to gather with, a place to be known, and a people often to journey with. These last several months of lockdown have really heightened that sense and desire for belonging, that in a socially distant world we long for company. Uh, this weekend marks All Saints Day in the church calendar, a weekend in which we, if we're being honest, are probably more familiar with the evening than the day. But it's a day that reminds us that we are part of something greater, 
something beyond our understanding, something even beyond our context or our church. We, as the people of God, are part of the saints of God. The saints that, as C.S. Lewis puts it, spans throughout all time, all space, and rooted in eternity. Revelation 7, 9 to 15, is a passage of belonging. It's one in which we see the fullness of All Saints Day as the hope of the saints is met and seen, and as the journey of the saints is explained. The challenge for us is what and how does it impact us? In verse 9, we see a picture of the gathered diversity of saints. And and as I read it, it reminded me of a a conference a few years ago in Belgrade, where I sat with uh, different ministers from across God's church, different denominations gathered in one place, uh, pastors from Turkey, ministers from Armenia, all gathered to worship God. And it was a powerful moment because not only did we worship the one God and hear from his word and pray together, we heard of their stories and their experiences as they shared about suffering, hardship, even the desire to be there. It was a moment that reminded me really of that wonderful picture we see here in verse 9, the gathered saints around the throne of God, longing and belonging for something beyond this world. Our belonging isn't defined simply by a location or a denomination, but by Christ and our being in him. We are those who belong by the blood of the Lamb. And thus here, the heavenly multitude in which John struggles to put into words, because his mind cannot fathom what he sees, as people from every nation, tribe, and tongue stand together before the throne of God, a building on Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, where we're told that the Lamb is worthy to open the scroll for the people of God. And here we see that image in fullness. Revelation 7 is our challenge of belonging. We see here even further as John goes on that this verse acts as both that challenge and assurance. An assurance because we're reminded that which God sets into motion at the cross of Christ, he will bring to fulfillment when his people gather around him. And the challenge because we have to question and ask ourselves about our own diversity here. What does it mean to be a part of a people who are not defined by status, ethnicity, power or possessions, but by the blood of Christ? A kingdom where the ways of the world don't influence our thinking and our being, but we're shaped by something beyond ourselves. And thus we look different to that which the world looks like and looks to. As the passage moves on, even further, we are reminded of the ongoing challenge and call of the Christian life. In verses 10 to 12, where a scene is built on as the people of God gathered cry out in response to what God has done to them. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The New Living Translation describes this moment as a great roar. The people of God, the saints of God, have grasped the wonder of the gift of God given to them, and they respond in praise. Salvation comes only through Christ. The angelic hosts of heaven with them respond with a triumphant amen and add further truth to the praise as they bow down and worship God, reminding us that God is worthy of all praise because he is all wise, all powerful, and all strong. Often those we group with are those we journey with in life. People to weather the storms of life with, the good moments, the bad, the confusion. In these strange times of COVID, that sense of community often is heightened and we experience it in different ways, whether through 
Zoom meetings and friendships, socially distant gatherings outdoors, or even that sense of coming together in church online. And the way, the reality of that journey is that it's often the context of belonging, of being part of the saints in our instance, that makes sense of the process. Here we see that as in verse 13, after having surveyed the multitude of the saints and watched as they have responded and joined in the worship of heaven, John is asked a question by one of the elders who are there with him. These in white robes, who are they and where do they come from? It's a rhetorical question used to simply hammer home the truth that has been presented. That these are both people who have been proved in the journey by coming out of a period of great hardship and suffering, what's called the tribulation here. And that yet, through no effort of their own, do they stand before God because their robes were made white, not by anything they have done, but by the blood of the Lamb. It's a picture of the righteousness of Christ that is given to us through faith. It was through belonging to Christ that they were able to walk. It was in belonging that they walked. And it was that through that belonging that the journey made sense. It's the journey of the saints that often forms the saints. And in verse 13 and 14, it, the reality of faith and the truth of the gospel is made known. Often, that which has value is made known in its cost. And thus for here we see that the value of Christ is made known that his people, his saints, willingly and joyfully endure whatever life may bring for him because in him they have something beyond this world. Secondly, in that sense, the truth of the gospel is made known because in that, in that good news of Jesus, God's people have all that they need. The passage explains this in that great sense of suffering, but yet it soon fades and our mind's eyes are turned to something far beyond this world. As the imagery of the old ways is left distant, a fading memory in a sense, as John's eyes turn to a great celebration, a great joy, as he reflects on the future inheritance of God's people as he presents a scene where the saints of God stand and enjoy the presence of God and know the joy of God. That joy is our assurance today. As we journey with Jesus now, we know that joy as we come together on Sundays and worship him, as we spend time in quiet reflection and prayer, and as we live out in the power of the Spirit. And yet we know that there is more joy still to come. A joy that is presented and captured using imagery from throughout the Bible, where the presence of God's people, we see that they will never hunger nor thirst again. Think of John chapter 6, verse 35. Nor will the scorching sun ever strike their backs. Isaiah 49, verse 10. Because God's presence is a protecting presence, as John here uses imagery from Ezekiel 37. And then that wonderful psalm so often read in moments of mourning and sorrow is presented as the fulfillment of joy and hope. As the people of God will be led by the Lamb of God to the springs of eternal life and drink from the living water. And as we dwell with God, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. C.S. Lewis says, as we draw nearer to the uncreated rhythms Pain and pleasure sink almost out of sight. Today, let us place whatever we are facing, feeling, suffering, or afraid of in the context of what it means to be part of the saints of God, gathered around his throne, living for him now and looking into what is to come. Revelation 7 today makes clear for us that salvation is a gift brought by God through the Lamb. So let us grasp that gift and make sure that we come into his presence through faith in Christ. And then let us live out that faith in a way that challenges the world and calls the world to himself.
as we practice the ways of the kingdom, as we present in ways that are different to the world, and most of all, as we live out a joy that the world cannot comprehend or take from us. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for this day as we remember what it means to be part of the people of God, a people that span all time, all places, all tribes and tongues, as we think of those who have gone before us and as we build for those who will come after us. Help us, by the power of your Spirit, to know the fullness of joy with you, that we walk not by our efforts, but as in faith, that we are a people who receive gifts after gifts of grace, and that our call is to make that grace known. Be with us this day, Lord, in this time of social distancing and pandemics. Help us to know a sense of belonging and community. And in all things, Lord, work through us, not for our sake, but for yours, we pray. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
Let us pray. Lord, we praise you for the great cloud of witnesses who have run the race and kept the faith, for the saints of previous generations, and we pray for Christians today as they live out their faith. We pray that our love for you will increase, that our faith will be deepened, our relationship with you enriched, and our resolve to do your will will be strengthened and lived out. We pray for Bishop Bill and Karen Love and the Diocese of Albany, for Bishop Moses and Mama Rejoice in the Diocese of Meridi, and for Bishop David and Hilary and this diocese. And Lord, we pray for those who experience hostility, discrimination or persecution for the sake of the gospel. Give them courage and strength an awareness of your presence and guidance. May they know your protection from those who seek to harm them because they follow you. Remind and reassure them that they have hope and a future because of their faith. Lord, we pray for the world, for citizens and leaders of each country. Give wisdom insight and understanding to those in leadership roles. We pray for those who are oppressed by poverty, hunger or homelessness, for those whose lives are being impacted by violence, tragedy or disaster. We pray for the Prime Minister, the government, for the Executive and the Assembly and for all who advise them. Guide them in these challenging and difficult times. Prosper the efforts of those working to find vaccines and treatments for the coronavirus and other illnesses. Motivate people to hear and heed the regulations and guidelines that have been drawn up to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Sustain and guide all those working on the front line, caring for those who are ill, those providing essential supplies and support and services, and all involved in the vital task of education. We pray for healing and wholeness for those who are ill, encouragement for those who are self-isolating, for those who are anxious, and those who are downhearted. Comfort those who are grieving. And we pray for restoration and renewal for those who are emotionally drained and physically weary. And then in a moment of quiet, we bring our own individual requests and thanksgivings to God our Father. We gather all our prayers in one, as we say, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Just a couple of things before we go, just to remind you of our services continuing each week online at 10.30 and then our kids program online at 11.30. 
Our services in the churches and in the halls continue each week. Uh, the service in Holy Trinity at 10, Holy Trinity Church at 10, the service in St. Patrick's Church at 10, and then the All Age service in St. Patrick's Church Hall at 10 as well, and then the All Age service in uh, Holy Trinity Church Hall at 11.15. Just to again mention connect groups, if you'd like to be involved in those. Um, and we're currently looking at, at God's big picture, how the whole Bible sort of links together uh, and what God is saying to us through it. Uh, if you'd like to find more information about that, please do contact the office. Alpha Online begins this Wednesday, uh, the 4th of November at 7.30. Uh, it would be great if you would let the office know or contact Andrew and let him know if you're planning to join and there's more information about how to connect in on that on the website and on Facebook. Thank you to everyone who sent in pictures or photographs for the Harvest Autumn competition uh, and uh, Ava will be looking at those and no doubt will be making a, an announcement before long. As I said last week, uh, there's no house to house uh, poppy sales this year and anyone who's having difficulty getting a poppy can get one from the British Legion Hall, which will be open from 7.30 to 9.30 this week on the weeknights. Um, and of course, they're also available in shops as well. And please do check out the, the website and Facebook for other things uh, that are available and other things that are happening. May the Lord continue to bless you and to keep you and to guide you uh, now and in the coming days until we meet again.